This is Mike, we're at Union Square with Elmo. I've been working on a concept for crowds to do most. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tell us about Manchester, where you're from. Manchester is an industrial mill town, made its uh, money in cotton and paper, and it's also famous for its music. Yeah, best bands have come out of Manchester, some yeah. of the best bands. Yeah. Well, the Halle Orchestra, which is 150 years old, through the Hollies to Joy Division, Doves, the Stone Roses. Happy Mondays. Happy Mondays, Oasis. Elbow. Oasis, yeah, of course. And then a Mr. Smith. The name Elbow, can you tell us where that came from? It's a terrible name, isn't it? Yeah, we regret calling ourselves that, but at the time we're like, yeah. oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean anything. Once you're established, it's fine. Yeah. People don't think about it, but we have, to, we have to live with it. Do you know a screenplay called The Singing Detective by Dennis Potter? And there's, there's a line of dialogue in there where he describes elbow as the most sensual word in the English language. Not by its definition, but by the way it feels to say in the mouth. And that's where the idea came from, but it doesn't stop the fact that it's still a shitty name. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to talk to you guys about your lyrics. They, as much as anything in your arrangements, deepen every song. I have so much trouble writing the lyrics, you know, because they've got to match up to the standard of music that, that, we, that we make together. And the boys put a lot of work in the detail, and I put a lot of work into the words. And in order to try and get my lyrics finished, because I was having a lot of trouble, I was stuck, I actually started dressing like I was going to the office and carrying a briefcase just to see if it had in some way helped me work. Uh, it didn't, apart from, <laughs> apart from the lyrics for The Bones of You, which describe this sort of very metrosexual sort of, you know, zipping through town, far too busy for life kind of guy, uh, being stopped in his tracks by a romantic song. I hate that so busy that you have to be really loud thing that some people do. No excuse for being anything other than a gentleman at all times, I feel. What's the greatest lyric in rock and roll? It's not my favorite song, but only love can break your heart is, I think, I think the holy grail of lyrics. I think when Neil Young wrote that down, he must have checked every book and every record he owned to make sure it was original. Mm. Phoned all his friends. Has anyone ever said this? You know, because it's so ridiculously simple uh, and timeless and and very very you know sure. If you wanted to turn it into a game, then. I think lyric writing is as much meaning as possible in as few words. Right, uh, this, the chorus goes, Throw those curtains wide. Sing that for me. Throw those curtains wide. Very compliant for this time of day. Uh, and then it goes, One day like this a year it see me right. Would see me right. Does that work? That's a sort of northern colloquialism. It see me right, that. Do you know what I mean? That means I'd be very happy about it. Your drink of choice is the Cuba Libre. Mm -hmm. um, what is your hangover cure of choice? The Cuba Libre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends who you ask. Yeah. I mean, I like a really, I mean, it's funny. The last two years at the studio, I've come in. Do you know what I mean? And been hung over here and then, and Guy will say, do you want a, a cup of tea? Do you know what I mean? And, and so for me, it's a cup of tea with a little bit extra sugar. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how I'm like, isn't it? Just so Just give me a, a bit more... A little bit of sugar. Bit sugar. Yeah. Let's say, your house is on fire. What is the first thing that you're going to pull out of the burning building? Uh, it's in grounds for divorce, actually. Um, it's Chinese a, cigarette case? Yeah, it's a Chinese cigarette case, which, is, <laughs> um, which was bequeathed to me by Brian's mother. Uh, our friend, our friend that we lost. It's it's really cheesy, cheap cigarette case with a hologram of Chairman Mao on it, which is just <laughs> beautiful. And uh, yeah, so that location of your favourite jukebox. Oh yeah, both got the same one. Yeah, well, if, it's, if it uh, is it not uh, mine's a temple. Yeah, mine's a temple yeah. as well. The temple of convenience. Uh, it's been brief, shortened to the temple over years. Is um, a converted Victorian underground toilet. Uh, with iron railings around it, and uh, 30 people in its full, and the best jukebox in the world. I'd put the whole of Tom Waits' Swordfish Trombones on, start to finish. Um, I'd put, I'd put some Queens of the Stone Age on. They've got songs for the deaf. Yeah. 
I'd put a bit of that on. I'll tell you what I'd put on. They're there, Radiohead. Oh, yeah, that's up there, isn't it? I'd put on the I Am Clute record as well, Gods and Monsters. That, that's, that's a terrifying listen. It's looking like a beautiful day. Hello, I'm Guy. I'm Pete. We're from Elbow and you're watching Blender.com. Last one. Throw. 